The next are the teeth, the gums. If your child comes to you and they have swollen gums or they have bleeding gums, the gums in Chinese medicine are often associated or always associated with the stomach. The stomach, if you have very much high inflammation from having parasitic infection, could result in thick, swollen gums or often bleeding gums or receding. If your child has gum issues or they're getting constant cavities, then there could be infections within the stomach. And furthermore, the teeth, if you have teeth that have been uh, yellowed or even gray, and they actually have often have cracks or cavities, this is a sign in Chinese medicine of the kidneys. So the kidneys are always associated with the teeth. The stronger the kidneys, the more pearly the white teeth are. The weaker the kidneys, the mineralization of the teeth are hindered because the kidneys help with bone mineralization. So you get to have maybe a perceived infection within the gums or even within the kidneys. So watch the teeth and the gums. This will tell you right off the bat what organ to go to. Heal the stomach or look at the kidneys. Look at UTIs. Look at urination within your child. Look how many times they have to go to go and urinate or how many times they have to get up in the middle of the night or if they do bed wetting. Let's go on down. Let's hit the throat. If the child has chronic throat congestion, always clearing their throat, that's an often sign that the kidneys are not filtering out the infections. So the kidneys are always related to, <clears throat> they call it the sputum. And I do not like to use a term where they have to hawk something up, but it's the truth. If you always have a child that's always having to clear their throat, I always advise and check the patient's kidney function. Because, yes, parasitic infections can get into the kidneys because they're trying to be filtered out. And why do parasites love the kidneys? Because it's a huge source of blood. And where do our nutrients go? Into the bloodstream. So it's a free meal. Now, those are a few. Now, the throat could be congested and oftentimes lead to thyroid conditions. Yes, your child could have thyroid conditions, whether it's low thyroid hormone output or if you start to see unusual weight gain. Now, that's where the toxicities of parasitic infections not only could be in the kidneys, but if they have any type of holding within the throat from ingestion of parasites, then the infection toxins could get in the lymph nodes of the throat as well, causing swollen lymph nodes. And then it can make the body more apt to have things like strep or flu viruses attached because of the weakness that it produces. Now, the lungs are the next organ I like to look at. Lungs usually mean that a, a child could have chronic allergies consistently. They can't breathe well. Their oxygen levels are low. Certain forms of protozooparasites are often known to get into the lungs. And so what they do is they rob energy. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. So the lungs can cause chronic mucus production as they cough it up. In the face, in Chinese medicine, if a, if a child has chronic redness around the middle of the face, right, or right, middle of the cheek, right here, that's associated with the lungs. So if you see that, then you know that there could be a hidden infection within the cheeks. The heart. The heart is associated with the tip of the nose. So if your child comes and they have a reddish nose or a discoloration, I usually associate that with not saying they have a bad heart, but there's an imbalance within the circulation system. Fatigue is one of the biggest things that will hit a child as one of your first signs and symptoms because the heart gets involved. Infections such as parasites can get in the bloodstream. The heart can be attacked with the parasitic infections. And please don't, I don't want this to sound scary. But this is something we have to look into. So the heart can be, I say, attacked or can be imbalanced by the parasites. And so the body goes into fight or flight. The body knows that there is something wrong. And the longer that the infections stay around, it could cause the person or the child to adapt to it. But all the while they're in fight or flight, it can cause the adrenals to start to burn out. And as the adrenals start to burn out, you'll start to notice your child have chronic fatigue throughout the day. 
So if you have a chronic fatigue syndrome within the child, then you know that the adrenals and the thyroid could be affected. Usually I always connect the adrenals to the kidneys because the adrenals sit right on top of the kidneys. So what I'm asking you to do is when you look at your child, remember on the facial features, you want to look at discoloration, redness, rashes, pimples. And then I combine it with the real common signs and symptoms of parasitic infections such as chronic fatigue, bloating after the child eats. If the stomach pushes out or if the child's stomach is pushed out continuously, that means inflammation is in the digestive tract. And usually parasites, when they smell a meal coming down the wire, down the pipe, they will move to the food source. So as they move to the food source, this is where they produce toxins. They're just like us. We eat, we consume, we make waste, and then we have to rest and sleep. They have a metabolism just like we do. So as they move, they produce toxins. And as they have movement, then more inflammation occurs, and your body deposits more serous fluid and more water and more uh, fluids to help cool down the area. So you'll have this avenue of pushing out or feeling very much water or fluid retention in the stomach of the child because of the movement of the parasites. Mm -hmm.